Hello family, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Akubeza and I'm a Christian content creator based in Lagos, Nigeria. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing the word of the Lord with you. And it's extra special. Today's video is titled, Overcoming the Enemy's Opposition. So before we get into the word, let's just say a quick prayer. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for gathering us together in your presence again. We want to thank you because we know that you are here with us. Thank you for sending us your word. Thank you for sending us word of confidence. Thank you for sending us this word of strength that when you are with us, there is nothing that we cannot overcome. Thank you, Lord, for being so powerful. Thank you for being so faithful, loving, gentle, but also all-powerful. Lord, we're so grateful to serve you. There's no other God like you. Thank you, Lord. At the end of the day and through our lives, may all power, glory, and adoration be brought unto your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So, wow, today's word is extra special to me because I personally needed it. And, you know, I hope, I pray that anyone who also needs this encouragement is led to this video today and i pray that the holy spirit reveals even more to you as you read the chapters so today i opened up to nehemiah nehemiah's chapter 4 5 and 6 is what we're going to be reading but if you notice the drawing which i've not yet colored in is from nehemiah 2 nehemiah 2 20 and it says the god of heaven will help us succeed and that is the conclusion of the matter when i even saw that i was like thank you for even sending that word because once i opened the chapter and i saw that page i was just like and i saw that drawing i was just like oh god you always just meet me right where i am like yo please develop a bible study habit because the more I'm reading the Bible, the more I'm realizing how God speaks so clearly through his word. Like, I'm telling you, there's nothing you're going through that he does not just have a word for you, both good and bad. Like, <laughs> anyways, like I always say, please read the chapters by yourself. Get your own fresh revelation from the word because I'm going to skim through some parts. But brief background on the book of Nehemiah. We have actually covered this book before and also covered the story of, you know, the rebuilding of the wall. Nehemiah was a Jew who had gone into um, exile. You know, there was a time when God allowed the Babylonians to capture the Jews. And that's because they had stopped serving God. They had stopped, you know, giving God the reverence that he deserved. They had stopped putting him first. They were worshipping other idols, which we've spoken about in so many previous other videos. And, you know, the consequences of which are that, you know, God removed his attention from them and his protection from them. And they were exposed to enemy attacks. But God, being the merciful, loving, restorative God that he is, still, you know, gave them a chance to rebuild, gave them a chance to go back home and reclaim their land and restored everything that was lost onto them. So at this point, Nehemiah, who is one of the Israelites who was now serving in a foreign land, was a cupbearer of a king. Taxesis, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I think let's just call him Xerxes. So he was his cupbearer and the king had seen him looking all sad and was like what's going on why are you not looking happy and he was like oh he has heard like messages came from judah and they've told him that the city is in ruins and they were in great trouble that the wall of jerusalem had been turned down and that the gates had been destroyed by fire so he found favor he had actually prayed before he saw the king and he found favor in the king's sight and the king gave him permission to go back and rebuild the wall and also gave him provisions gave him letters to let other people know that you know he had the king's authority and gave him wood different things that he needed to rebuild and arms men as well so we get to chapter four just wanted to give you guys a context to what is happening before we get here so in chapter four it says that sanbalat was very angry when he heard that we were rebuilding the wall he flew into a rage and mocked what does this bunch of poor feeble jews think they're doing do they think they can build a wall in a single day by just offering a few sacrifices? Do they actually think they can make something of stones from a rubbish heap and charred ones at that? <laughs> Should I say signal number one of when the enemy is opposing you? Taunting, mocking begins. Let's, 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 let's pay attention, folks. <laughs> we keep going. 
Then Tobiah the Ammonite, who was standing beside him, remarked, That stone wall would collapse if even a fox walked along the top of it. Then I pray, this is Nehemiah speaking, because these are his memoirs, so it's written in like the first person. It says, Then I prayed, Hear us, our God, for we are being mocked. May their scoffing fall back on their own heads. And at last the wall was completed to half its height around the entire city, for the people had walked with enthusiasm. And, you know, I, I took a note from that, that despite the taunting and the mocking, the people kept walking with enthusiasm. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and Ammonites and Ashdodites heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the wall were being repaired, they were furious. Enemy gets even angrier. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. Tactic number two. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. You see how every time the enemy opposes, okay, it's either they are mocking, he prays. You see that they are taunting, he prays. They are trying to confuse you. you and it's the number one strategy to overcoming the enemy's opposition is prayer. Prayer is the master key. And trust me, I'm learning this thing so much now. The value of taking everything to God in prayer. You know how you call your friend and start ranting about, oh, look what did, look what did. Look, look. Talk to God, no man. Just talk to God directly before you want to start talking to anybody because he will reshape your thoughts. There is power in the tongue. But let's keep moving. Then the people of Judah began to complain because the opposition was just so much. The workers are getting tired and there is so much rubble to be moved. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. Look what they started saying. Those seeds of doubt started actually entering into their mind, even though they had already reached halfway point. Despite the mocking that, what kind of materials are they using? Do they think they can build this wall? Do a fox can walk on top of this wall and it will fall down. The opposition was not making sense, but it was seeping in. It was seeping in. So be mindful of that, that even when it seems like you're resistant, those things are entering your ear and you need to pray them out. Meanwhile, their enemies continued saying that before they know what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. Now they entered into proper threats. No longer confusion and mocking, they now started threatening. The Jews who lived near the enemy came and told us again and again, they will come from all directions and attack us. It made me think of how you need to be mindful about also the people that you receive messages from, the people that you allow speaking to you. Because these ones were living close to the enemies, they were the most threatened. They were hearing it all the time. They were probably getting the taunting and the mocking the most. And whenever they came over to the side where the Jews were rebuilding, of course, they were going to bring that same energy, bring those same doubts, bring those same insecurities, bring those same negative thoughts and perceptions and it was getting into the mindset of the people rebuilding so be mindful be mindful of taunting be mindful of mocking be mindful of threats and very importantly be mindful of the people that you're listening to who is speaking into you anyways nehemiah now says that he placed armed guard in the exposed area stationed the people to stand guard by families armed with swords spears and bows then i looked over the situation i called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them don't be afraid of the enemy remember the lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers your sons your daughters your wives and your homes when our enemies heard that we knew of their plans and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to our walk on the wall. But from then on, only half my men worked, while the other half stood guard with spears, shields, bulls, and coats of mail. The laborers carried on their work with one hand supporting their load and one hand holding a weapon. All the builders had a sword belted to their side. The trumpeters stayed with me to sound the alarm. Then I explained to the nobles and officials and all the people. We are widely separated from each other. When you hear the blast of the trumpet, rush to wherever it is sounding, then our God will fight for us. Please, I hope you're picking up on this next strategy. It's one thing to pray. It's another thing to be mindful of, you know, the things that you're listening to, things that you're internalizing, how you're responding to mocks and taunts and threats it's another thing to be armed i love the fact that yes they've prayed they've committed their plans to god but they still took proactive measures like when you when you believe that god is going to do something for you it's not enough to just say oh yes i believe and you relax from there it's like you believe and then you act on your belief so it's like 
you're, you're saying oh I'm, I'm about to get this contract already you're making the budget you're making the arrangements for where you need to go once the thing comes through it's like you have to act on your faith so it's like yes we we know that god will fight for us but we are not going to just be sitting back while God is fighting. We have our arms, we have our weapons to also fight as God is fighting with us. I hope the Holy Spirit is going to make this thing clear to you because I'm so gingered and I hope I'm speaking clearly. Anyways, next strategy is that they kept working. You don't give up. You keep going. Look what it says in verse 21. We worked early and late from sunrise to sunset. During this time, none of us, not I, nor my relatives, nor my servants, nor the guards who were with me, ever took off our clothes we carried our weapons with us at all times even when we went for water don't stop working don't give up about this time some of the men and their wives raised a cry of protest against the fellow jews they were saying we have such large families we need more food to survive others said we have mortgaged our fields vineyards and homes to get food during this famine and others said we have had to borrow money on our fields and vineyards to pay our taxes must we sell our children into slavery just to get enough money to live when i heard these complaints i was very angry after thinking it over i spoke out against these nobles and officials i told them you are hurting your own relatives by charging interest when they borrow money then i called a public meeting to deal with the problem at the meeting i said to them we are doing all we can to redeem our jewish relatives who have had to sell themselves to pagan foreigners but you are selling them back into slavery again what you are doing is not right. Should you not walk in the fear of our God in order to avoid being mocked by enemy nations? Please pick up on another strategy. I myself, as well as my brothers and my workers, have been lending the people money and grain. But now let us stop this business of charging interest. You must restore their fields, vineyards, olive groves and homes to them this very day and repay the interest you charge when you lend them money, grain, new wine and olive oil. They replied, we will give back everything and demand nothing more from the people. We will do as you say. Then I called the priests and made the nobles and officials swear to do what they had promised. I shook out the folds of my robe and said, if you fail to keep your promise, may God shake you like this from your homes and from your property. The whole assembly responded, Amen, and they praised the Lord, and the people did as they had promised. So I hope you're picking up on this strategy about returning to God's instructions, returning to righteousness. Like even despite the enemy opposing the Jews, it was obvious that some of the Jews themselves were oppressing their fellow Jews, which is not right. You know, that's not right in God's sight and God will not be happy to protect and bless people who are oppressing their fellow people. So I feel like part of their strategy to overcoming the enemy's opposition was returning to righteousness, returning to God's design and, you know, curbing away all, like taking away all those excesses that were, should I say, pulling them away from God or separating them from God more, should I say. And Nehemiah continues, for the entire 12 years that I was governor of Judah, neither I nor my officials drew on our official food allowance. The former governors, in contrast, had laid heavy burdens on the people, demanding a daily ration of food and wine, besides 40 pieces of silver. Even their assistants took advantage of the people. But because I feared God, I did not act that way. I also devoted myself to working on the wall and refused to acquire any land, and I required all my servants to spend time working on the wall. I asked for nothing, even though I regularly fed 150 Jewish officials at my table, besides all the visitors from other lands. I refused to claim the governor's food allowance because the people already carried a heavy burden. Remember, O oh God, all that I have done for these people and bless me for it talk to God not to people you see how he was not trying to get his reward from people he was not trying to get his reward by exploiting other people or by exploiting his position he was banking on God he knew that God will remember and that God will reward his efforts anyways as usual opposition continued 
In chapter 6, it says that Sambalat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall and that no gaps remained, though we had not yet set up the doors and the gates. So Sambalat and Geshem sent a message asking me to meet them at one of the villages. But I realized they were plotting to harm me, so I replied by sending this message to them. I am engaged in a great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? Hello, hello, hello. I hope you're listening. Strategy number, I don't even know what now. Distractions. Distractions. Come and meet me. Come and see me. Come and talk to me. Come and come. Go. Just follow God's instructions. Don't allow the enemy to distract you. He will try and mock you. He will try and taunt you. He will try and threaten you. He will send inside, uh, insiders to confuse you and oppress you. Then he will now start trying to invite you, to distract you. Stay woke. Four times they sent the same message, and each time I gave the same reply. The fifth time, Sambalat's servant came with an open letter in his hand, and this is what it said. There is a rumor among the surrounding nations, and Geshem tells me it is true, that you and the Jews are planning to rebel, and that is why you are building the wall. Lizo. According to his reports, you plan to be their king. He also reports that you have appointed prophets in Jerusalem to proclaim about you. Look, there is a king in Judah. You can be very sure that this report will get back to the king. So I suggest that you come and talk it over with me. <laughs> the way my, I was enraged when I was reading this thing, you know, like, they keep trying. Like, are you not going to give up? You will try lies, you will try flattery, you will try distraction, you will try confusion, you will try mockery, like, give up. Anyways, he might have been the sharp guy that he is, replied, There is no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. They were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued the work with even greater determination. I underlined that place double even greater determination when the enemy is coming for you you should know that you're on track to something great so press in be immovable as in anyways later i went to visit she shemaiah son of deliah and grandson of mehetabel who was confined to his home he said let us meet together inside the temple of god and bolt the doors shut your enemies are coming to kill you tonight but i replied should someone in my position run from danger? Should someone in my position enter the temple to save his life? No, I won't do it. I realized that God had not spoken to him, but that he had uttered this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. They were hoping to intimidate me and make me sin. Then they would be able to accuse and discredit me. Stay woke, my friends. <laughs> and then he prayed again. Remember, O oh God, all the evil things that Tobiah and Sambalat have done. And remember Noadiah the prophet and all the prophets like her who have tried to intimidate me. So on October 2nd, the war was finished, just 52 days after we had begun. When our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. They realized this work had been done with the help of our God. What a word. <laughs> Thanks be to God for the God who fights for us, the God who helps us succeed, the God who enables us to overcome the enemy's opposition. Man, I was talking throughout the video, so there's really no summary, but I hope you've gained some strategies about how to overcome the enemy's opposition. Strategy number one, God. Hand it all over to God and he will never fail you. All right, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Jesus loves you even more. Thank you.